Hi, and welcome to Coach's Corner as we begin another week of high school football. It'll be week four this week, Ponca City and Stillwater, the uh, final of three home games in a row for Ponca City. The Wildcats will be on the road a few times in the next part of the season, but uh, week four means another home football game. And Coach, uh, although you haven't been part of a Ponca City-Stillwater per se mm -hmm. rivalry game so far, I'm, uh, I'm sure that... Uh, Fans and players and other coaches have told you that this is a pretty special time, a special week and a special game. Yeah, I mean, just uh, being just so close in proximity and, you know, the towns uh, uh, through the years have had uh, great battles and such, so it's fun to be a part of a rivalry game. Compare it for us. So you played for Edmond Santa Fe High School. Who was the big rival when you were in high school? Well, I mean, it, it, when I was in high school, we were 5A and the other two were 6A. So we didn't really we didn't cross over yet and play each other, um, you know. When I as far as close thing rivalry, McGinnis, you know, we played them that year. They were they were talking some trash and stuff, and yeah. they turned into a kind of rivalry there. Maybe but, not a city city type yeah. thing like we have sure. here. So when I coached at Memorial, um, the the North and Santa Fe games uh -huh. were big were big games. Yeah. When so, you were at uh, Springdale, who was the big rivalry? Spring, Springdale Harbor. Okay. There's another cross town sc uh, school in Fayetteville. Fayetteville was pretty also uh, a big rival. Big crowds, lots uh -huh. of Huge. oh animosity as yeah. you approach the game, yeah. that type of thing. And Absolutely. Uh, this Stillwater-Ponca City game, not only is it, um, Coach, a big rivalry game, but the added importance of Week 4, which means district play yeah. begins too. It's fine. I mean, our, our ultimate goal is to make the playoffs. And even though we've uh, you know, started off in a little rough, rough patch as far as not winning a game yet, uh, the, you know, those games do not... Uh, really affect what our ultimate goal is and that's to make the playoffs that that starts this week I know that uh, you've reviewed the ball game on on Friday night against Shawnee where what a start uh, we get out 14 nothing and it looks like uh, you know we're on our way to a, a big victory and uh, somehow in there Shawnee scored some points and we got a couple of great field goals by Andrew sure, Lesnick sure. let's say that I mean and, you know, if nothing else came out of that ball game, Coach, you have to be sky high with confidence if you need a field goal. Yeah, well, that's that one of the better things we executed all night as far as consistently. We, I mean, that that's impressive. I mean, well, I think 26 and 34 or something like that, the yard field goals. And uh, for a high school kid, that that is impressive. And they were not in the middle of the field. They were on hashes. And just to be able to get the snap, the hold, the protection on there that far off and then get it done between the – and it looked – they were both healthy kicks. Right. So, I mean, that, that, that is, that is uh, important. You know, that does give me some confidence when we need uh, points now. But obviously, you know, breaking down the game, they – you know, we uh, had trouble stopping them from about mid-second quarter on, you know, and, and uh, defensively and just really their quarterback run game. Uh, you know, and we just – you know, we've been playing such great defense for – Really, two and a half ball games, I think, you know, overall. Um, and, uh, you know, then offensively, we drove all we wanted to almost almost every series all night in between the field and then and then just, you know, miss executed on some small things that we look back on. There were some real small things. I'm talking about some just some communication factors from sideline to huddle. You know, we uh, uh, that really cost us down inside the red zone. And so if we get those cleaned up, you know, uh, you know, the, the you know that that outcome's different if we if we execute a little bit better down there. And we talk about it. It's great to have field goals, but this was a ball game where you needed some touchdowns. Mm -hmm. And so um, you know those field goals were great. But boy, you just had a feeling that that uh, we were we needed another score. We needed another big touchdown. And uh, you know both teams made big plays. Uh, both teams had opportunities. We got down there close. And then they pushed us back. We got a penalty and ultimately had to kick the mm -hmm. field goal. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of those games, I'm sure, where you look at it and go, if a play or two were different, we might have been able to score a touchdown sure. where we had to settle for field goals. Yeah, I mean, it's been rough. And, you know, coaching profession, it's rough. When you analyze a game, you blame a lot. You know, there could have been a couple of different play calls. Uh, you know, I've been beating myself up about a couple, maybe possibly some different pass a couple of pass plays could have been called different uh, or, or could have been called than when we ran it. Um, but, you know, we, we had we got down the field running the ball and, and uh, uh, we had just, you know, we, we just miscommunicated on some things and didn't execute like we had a couple of plays earlier on the same play. So, uh, you know, but, yeah, we can't do it. Can't have holding penalties, can't fumble snap, uh, you, know, uh, you know, on a critical third down. You can't. Um, you know, you just can't do. You know, can't get the you know, ten uh, holding penalty. 
you know, those things just, that's, that's what, that's what kills drives. So uh, we'll, we'll continue to get better at that and I'll call some better plays and, and hopefully we'll, we'll execute better and, and uh, you know, we'll get, we'll be ready. One thing we did, uh, I know you're pleased about is we did cut down on the number of turnovers coach in this mm -hmm. ball game. Yeah. I um, mean, last week was penalties, you know, we improved there and then uh, this week was turnovers. So, uh, uh, yeah, uh, really we had one interception and um, and that, I don't think we even had a that was it. No. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so that that is better. You know, that was better. You know, still like to go out and no turnovers, but mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that was a better production. Coach, uh, the team you play this Friday, it's an emotional game for everybody. Stillwater's two and one. Tell me about their ball club. Good, well coached. I mean, uh, Tucker Barnard does a great job uh, at Stillwater, and it shows with his players. You know. Uh, they, they, you know, the, the the difference in the talent level is not too much difference between Ponk and Stillwater. Uh, you know, just Tucker's got a good program going on there, and, and it's, you can tell it's well organized. Um, the kids are coached well, and uh, you know they're coming off, uh, uh, you know, two and one with one of their wins beating Midwest City, and uh, you know, and then our only loss came at, at, at a Mustang, which is a, always a probably tough place to play at. So. They're going. They're going to be. Uh, they're going to be a tough challenge. Right. Uh, Tucker uh, Barnard is an old Fairfax kid who, mm -hmm. like you, came to came mm -hmm. to this area from coaching high school ball over in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. too. Sure. Yeah. He was at Shiloh Christian, uh, one of the great uh, private schools there in that area. I would imagine that uh, coming off of a, a loss and beginning district play, it's going to be tough. But I would think Stillwater comes at a, at a good time for your team, though, because. Sometimes, if it's not a game that would get their attention, you might have some thoughts about practice. But one thing that will get our boys motivated is the thought of playing across from that uh, golden blue. So, uh, I would imagine it's going to be a pretty positive week of practice this week. Sure. Um, yeah. I mean, when you're when you're when you when you have won a game, I mean, each each week is a. You know, you're you're like man. I mean, you want to keep the guys, you know, the morale level up as much as possible and that gets to be difficult you know at times when when you're struggling uh but <clears throat> you know you're right a rivalry game like still work couldn't come at a better time uh it should be a natural excitement uh, uh for it you know not only because it's, it's a first district game because really we're preaching oh is it oh and oh mm -hmm. you know i mean our goal is to make the playoffs and, it really, and then the other games did not affect that goal so i mean it, it starts oh and oh right here and then plus being the the uh, traditional rival also adds adds some flavor to it so you're right. Kids should, should should be a problem getting the kids amped up for practice. If you were three and zero right now, you'd still probably be saying the same thing that you mm -hmm. just told me to. Yeah, if we were three and zero. I'd still be saying, "Oh no, that's correct. Absolutely." Uh, and and there's many a, a sports stories that teams had great Septembers and did not make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. You know, or, or just you know, only won three games the rest of the year after that. You know, there, there there's plenty of stories. And there's also the other side. I I know the coach I was under at Springdale, the school he was at before, he he, he uh, literally went 0-5 and, and uh, made the playoffs, went to the state finals. You know, like I do, the level of competition has a lot to do with your record. If Josh Allen eventually wants to be 3-0, and you can schedule 3-0, and but that may not help you very much when sure. you get to district. Uh, you mentioned something really interesting that I picked up on just now, the talent level, and you said doesn't look like you know, Stillwater may have a better record. They may have a little more talent, but the talent levels between Sepulpa, Stillwater, Ponca, Ean, and Bartlesville, I think they're all pretty close. It's pretty who close. makes who makes plays. And so that being said, you can be three and zero, zero and three, but the talent level still is going to be pretty close. And on our home field, if we just make a few more plays, we can win the ball game. That's why, you, that's why we we tell our guys just keep staying with it. You know, uh, it could turn it any week. You know, and then you know you win one, and then pretty soon it, it could spiral into something bigger, you know, than that, and some multiple wins. Uh, so I mean, we just got to stay patient, keep getting better at, at, at our fundamentals. I mean, we we we're restructuring our practice, um, uh, we're locking in. Uh, we we went down our roster, we're locking in most of our guys to one side of the football, and we're going to restructure our practice to get more individual and group time. Uh, because it's just been so rushed trying to divide up both ways. And so I think our quality on execution could improve because of that. You've got some boys going both ways. You're going to try to mm -hmm. try to eliminate some of that as we get deeper sure, into the season sure. now. Well, we just, you know, a lot of things you saw in the Shawnee game is possibly a lack of 
of practice time at one position. You know, and I, I think if you look at all the good, all the good programs organizationally, usually try to do that. Uh, it just, it, you know, when you think about it, one guy has one less thing to learn and can spend more time at his, at that certain position. He will eventually execute better. It's so. going to be a great week, Coach. Mm -hmm. uh, Stillwater coming to town Friday night. Wildcats looking for a district win, 7:30 at Sullen Stadium. It'll be a great night, a great ball game. We hope to see you there. For Coach Allen, Phil Turney, Coach's Corner. Thank you.